Does anybody remember this skit? Okay, <clears throat> okay, Mr. Mr. Allen. Right. I believe that I believe that your case is was going to be going to trial not this Monday but the following Monday. All right. Before I get a copy strike, I'll take that down. But you might remember <laughs> that someone made a very good animation of that. So good that I actually thought it was from Adult Swim. It was not. Actually, we don't need their music. I don't even know if their music is copyrighted. So, this guy, this person, this animator, made a full Rick and Morty animation out of that audio and sort of storyboarding. And I really thought it was the real thing. And then last week, there was an announcement this announcement, that it was taken down. The YouTuber is Tiara Y, T-I-A-R-A-W-H-Y, if you want to subscribe to them. I guess I'll scroll down for just a sec here, so anybody who wants to see. And their animations are very good. They will be producing their own show sometime here in the near future. And so I think it would be very helpful for them if everybody went and subscribed. Here, I'll do it. I'll subscribe myself. And we'll see what their animation style and show come up with. Here's a look at their some of their prototyping here. And I think that uh, that's all very interesting. But who knew that that was actually not a original animation licensed or produced or authorized by Justin Roiland and Adult Swim. Now, I'm a little bit concerned because it was obviously very popular and it was allowed to be up for a very long time. So I'm not sure if that was because Adult Swim allowed it or didn't notice it or Justin Roiland asked them to, to leave it up for a little while. It's been up for what, about a year? I think, yeah. Because the, the original one has been up. This is the the original one, was which was voiced by Justin Roiland himself, but was not animated, was published August 4th, 2016. And I don't know when the other one went up. I don't know how to find it real quick here. It but, was sometime last year. Yeah, sometime in 2017, right? So it was like middle yeah. 27. So like for more, for a year, or maybe a little bit more than a year, this counterfeit Rick and Morty production was up. And it turns out it was fan fiction. And of course, now we're talking about it because it was taken down. And I'm not here to defend taking it down, but I am here to explain why it was not a fair use. And I'm sorry about that. And if you don't like that, please hit the don't like that button, but please stay subscribed to our channel. But the, the reason isn't, be, not be, it's not because it wasn't a good one or because it wasn't funny or because it wasn't super high quality. It didn't bring great things to Adult Swim and all that. I'm sure that it is nothing but positive that it was up in the first place. If I was an owner, creator, person in charge of making that decision, I would definitely leave that up and just ask the person to make it clear that it was a, a fan-created thing. And I don't know, it, depending upon how large or small my production was, if I was a small production, I might ask for a small license fee. If I was a large production, I think I would just let it go as a, as a decent fan contribution to the community. But the point is, is that the copyright owner does technically get to control derivative works. And taking a production that has been voiced by Justin Roiland and animating it without permission is creating a derivative work while you are adding significant copyrighted material of your own. If you are only drawing characters that 
belong to someone else, you are still infringing on their copyright. And so I thought we'd take two minutes, five minutes or whatever here and talk about why this is not a fair use. One, our first factor is the purpose and character of the use, the use being the, the second production, the derivative work. The purpose and character of the use was to animate an existing production. That's not transformative. Very creative, very artistic, very talented individual, but it is not transformative. It does not transform Rick and Morty, and especially not State of Georgia versus Denver Fenton Allen as produced by Justin Roiland, does not change that work into something new and different. It simply takes it further, which is a derivative. Second is the nature of the copyrighted work. These were both commercial works. Even if Tiara Y was not, did not have the video monetized, which I don't, I don't know the status of that. The, my understanding is that Tiara Y is a commercial animator. And so it was definitely able to be used for an advancement of career kind of purpose commercial purpose. So I don't think the court's going to have any problem citing that that was a commercial commercial use and both things are commercial works. The third thing is how much the amount and substantiality of the portion used. It was the whole thing. No, it wasn't all of Rick and Morty, but it was all of State of Georgia versus Denver Fenton Allen. And then fourth is the market usurpation factor. This is sort of stepping on Justin Roiland's ability. What if he wanted to make his own animation? What if the six million views on the unanimated version was just the beginning and they, they were deciding on whether they wanted to make an animated version? What if they were just starting work or what if they were just finishing work on it and then Tiara Y's version comes out and it's basically identical? not necessarily exactly identical, but it's, 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 it's an animation made from the storyboarding of the previous production. That's exactly how you would make it. And without permission, how would Tiara Y know that they were making one and please don't make one of their own? So, I mean, not saying that anyone stopped an actual production from, from Adult Swim or whatever, but that's where this goes, is it's the, it's the copyright owner's right to do that, and what if they were working on it? Well, if they were working on it, yes, it would absolutely have usurped the market. So yes, it fails on, for me, all four fair use factors. It is not a fair use. It should never have been construed or constructed with any reliance on fair use. And that's an awful lot of work to do if you really thought it was going to be a fair use. I'm guessing that this person is more a big fan of Rick and Morty, used this as an opportunity to make something fun. Heck, we make these videos. I make these videos as a fun way to, to explore these cases. I would want to sit here and read all of these cases myself anyway, and instead I turn on some lights and stuff and, and, and talk to you about the cases, and it becomes an even more fun and interactive experience for me. I mean, you're 100% right. It's a pretty clean analysis. It's obviously the exact same characters. and Yeah, and I think the fact that you actually thought that it was produced by Adult Swim really that doesn't, doesn't help for the, yeah. for the fair use help. argument. I mean, it's clearly a usurpation of the market. If you actually genuinely... Yeah, I was genuinely was surprised Swim. when I heard it was taken down and it was a fan fiction, or not, not a fan fiction, but a fan um, derivative work, uh, I'll, I'll, even without the characterization, just made by a fan. Uh, that 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 surprised the heck out of me. The uh, the animation was good. There's I have no not not knocking the animation at all. The animation was so good. In fact, I think it makes it worse. That makes the analysis fair use analysis worse. You can't even say that this was a poorly drawn anything, which still doesn't negate fair use. But but at least there's a better argument. This was a shot for shot or line for line character remake. I mean, I, I really thought that this was Morty and Rick as drawn by authorized uh, licensed yeah. people. And, it, yeah, it, does, and it does raise a question I can no longer answer because I'm, I'm too deep into the law at this point. But my understanding is this guy filed a, a, a challenge with the YouTube system, which of course was denied, which raises the question of to the average non-lawyer, what exactly does fair use mean? Because I've forgotten. Like, what's the app? What, what does fair use mean to the average person? Yeah, like if you ask the average person off the street, what is fair use? Yeah, because you see all these things where 
people post this and say no copyright infringement intended fair use and it's like it's not even remotely close so well what does fair use mean to people exactly at this point i don't know that one that might be a good question and i think maybe we'll take the new 360 camera and a microphone and go walk around the streets of some major city someplace like new york again where i just got back from and maybe ask some people what does copyright fair use mean to you Maybe we'll even stand outside of YouTube and NBC and a few others as their employees go in and out and just ask them some questions while wearing a funny hat. And that might be, that might be something fun. We'll explore that. Because I, I honestly think, and here's my analogy, when I drive down the streets of any city or town, it's not highway is what I'm trying to say, there's always somebody who's got to either double park or they put their four ways on and then drive like a moron or they put their blinker on and then drive across 16 lanes of traffic like, oh, I had my blinker on, like you should have known I was coming. And I honestly think that that's what people get in the impression of fair use. It's like, oh, well, I said fair use, therefore the magic words have been said, therefore I can do whatever I want. And sometimes I think it's willful and sometimes I think it's ignorant. And sometimes I think it's just a misunderstanding, which I would classify under ignorant. But it seems to be for some people that it's a, a magic word, like a, like a, oh, it was a sovereign citizen level kind of, well, we don't understand this. We're not going to understand this. We don't have time to understand this. So we'll just wing it. Yeah. It's almost a sovereign citizen word. The, the law by magic words thing needs to stop. <laughs> You're right. It's a constant problem. Obviously, the, De the the Rick and Morty, Denver, Fenton, Allen thing was, was highly entertaining, and both the unanimated version and Tierra Wise animated version were highly entertaining. That was their purpose. There was, this was not an educational or criticism or commentary. There's no commentary. Tierra Wise didn't make any commentary. If, so here's, here's the closest analogy I can think of. It just popped into my head. If Tiara Y wanted to do this under fair use, Tiara Y would have had to have put the Justin Roiland production into a different setting. So it's not happening in a courtroom. It's happening in some place, and that place is somehow commentary. Um, I can't think of exactly what would be the poignant commentary. Hypothetical. Let's say that the artist, I'll, I'll, I'll call Tierra Y the artist, so I'm not, I'm not putting words in their mouth. Let's say the artist wanted to make commentary about how Justin Roiland is just making low-hanging fruit, a kind of easy production and not really putting time and effort into it. Maybe instead, the Denver Fenton Allen thing would be performed in like a shitty cartoonist studio that's like all drawn crappy and all that. And in it, and then maybe it shifts over to like an empty cartoonist apartment or something. And there's like, you know, it's like, it's like John Arbuckle from Garfield. And it's like all like, like lonely bachelor kind of thing. And like, like it shift over to the person going to their car. And it's like a broken down car or something. And they're having this argument next to one another. That's closer to transformative and a fair use than writing the scene as it was originally shot. Creating the animation as a, as a scene would have been originally acted out. That's not transformative. They could make it something by, by then changing the animation to be something completely different for a purpose, is what I'm saying. Well, thank you for joining us. That is our show, everyone. I am Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney, and joining us today has been Kurt Mueller, your favorite patent attorney. Reminder that he has produced two videos on the Lewis Rossman trademark thing, and I'm going to have a link in the description of any of the videos that we produce, so go and see that, and if I can remember, I'll make a card for it right here. We have hit 100,000 subscribers. Thank you very much for helping us celebrate that. Thank you very much to our Patreon supporters. You can support the channel financially at patreon.com slash ljfrench. At the $50 level in October, thank you to Jonathan Doe, John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Evie, Andy, Kyle Mudrock, Veriment Tain, Sean McNamara, William Gonzalez, Michael Pierce, Brunkle Tia Marie, Terry Crisp, Richard Fournier, Michael Jones, Spirit Bear, and Jan Negre. And thank you to the $5 plus supporters who will be on the crawl and are scrolling on the LED panel behind me. 
So that is our show, everyone. Have a good one, and I will see you in the videos this week. I hope you all have a good week. You deserve it. Love you all. Bye. Hello, my boy and girl. Hello. How are you, my boy? Oh, oh, Ilsa. Ilsa, that's not a toy, Ilsa. Guys, Dad, do you see this? Do you see what she's got? That is not a toy for you. Thank you very much, though. <laughs> Hello. 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 How are you?